So, what if Toji or Maki were put against a gauntlet featuring literally every single cursed spirit Jujutsu Kaisen had to offer? With the new developments we've received about Heavenly Restriction, how far do you really think our Zenin duo would be able to go against some of the most notable curses in the series? To help out, I've got my man Broken Ronin here. Yo, what's up everybody? Ready, ready, ready to uh, get to some scaling real quick. And we've prepared a list that we're gonna take both of our Heavenly Restriction users through and walk them through each battle, deciding whether or not they stand a chance against that particular enemy. Without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into it. All right, all right, so first Cursed Spirit on the list is gonna be Flyhead. <laughs> How do uh, Toji and Maki handle Flyhead? Yeah, to Toji keeps them for pets, so I think that's kind of like, uh, that's indicative of, of, of what kind of power we're dealing with you. They, they, they get bodied. <laughs> he does keep like thousands of them inside the inventory curse, doesn't he, right? Yeah, yeah, he literally just releases them to fight Gojo. Like, okay, they're clearly not a, a problem for him. They're all his sons. All right, <laughs> knocked out. All right, next on the gauntlet uh, is the Ropongai curse. I don't even remember him. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute fodder. That's the curse that um uh, in the in the third episode or the beginning chapter with Nobara, uh, they fight him in the uh, abandoned building. He takes the kid hostage. <laughs> yeah, the one that base like no cursed energy. Yuji slices the arm off of. Yeah, to Toji and Maki got that. Toji would rip it apart with his bare hands. I feel like not doesn't even need a curse tool. What what he did to um. Uh, Eno is exactly what he'd do to that curse. He'd just punch the <laughs> shit out of it. 100%. All right, all right. Right down the list, we're moving on. Uh, Toji. Oh, oh, and also, you know what? We got to give Maki some smoke, too. Maki would take out both of these curses, no problem whatsoever. We can't forget about her. 100%. The, the new Toji, pretty much, right? Mm -hmm. Next yeah, yeah, is yeah. the uh, semi grade one from volume zero. Uh, the Zumba curse. <laughs> oh, okay. The one that you Maki and you to fight? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to Toji and Maki are running up with the respective soul splitting blades and cutting that thing in half. Like, it's it's funny how badly it gets dealt with. Yeah, 100%. It, it, it's not even a question. I mean, like, maybe you need some nice acrobatic work. Not even because of how fast they are. Those light beams wouldn't even be able to track where they were, probably. Like, it would 100%. be one and done. Like, he would lift his... He'd lift his his fingers up and they'd be cut in half. Yeah. Donzo. I mean, Inumaki dealt with it. <laughs> Facts. That's enough. And uh, next on the gauntlet, we've got the Yasahachi Bridge Curse. Okay. And that was the, that's the like, what is it? The whack-a-mole curse, basically? Yeah, pretty much the whack-a-mole curse. Okay. Yeah. So Toji just plays, Toji and Maki play whack-a-mole for a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of exercise in. So, like, uh, the way that I envision it is, like, uh, Toji has, like, that, uh, what is it, the chain of a thousand miles, and I guess yeah. we could use Maki as the same thing. I just imagine him, like, putting uh, the inverted Spear of Heaven or whatever kind of blade he wants to use and just swinging it around, like, lassoing it and just taking them all out at once. Like, not even, like, not yeah. even moving around. Pretty nasty strategy, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like, all right, cool, we're done. Uh, would it, whoever paid me to kill this, like, go and give me my money. Yeah, 100%. Megami and Nobara were able to make quick work of that curse. And, like, in the anime, like, they were, like, putting some style on it. Yeah, like, Megami's like, all right, bruh, I told you your tricks are garbage. Uh, yeah. And, no, and like I said, like you said, like, Nobara was stunting on him. Like, okay, yeah. Maki and Toji got this. All right, next up is the smartest curse spirit on this list, the Grasshopper Curse. I think I think this fight would just be interesting just because I would love to see the four arms versus two arms redone with somebody like 10 times faster and stronger than Yuji. I just think that would be a super cool scene. I don't know why, but I mean it wouldn't be a close fight, but I think it would be it would be a pretty funny interesting like hand-to-hand -hand combat sequence for like four seconds true true and you know what it's funny because i thought you were going to say it's interesting for a completely different reason i think it'd be interesting just to see the the dialogue even for toji and maki two completely different personalities like i just love to see like <laughs> what like they would even say to him would they even dignify him with the response yeah Honestly, okay, Toji might, because Toji seems to like to play with his food a little bit when he doesn't take it all that serious. Uh, the curse that asks if, if she's pretty, he's like, yeah, you're not my type for real. You're interesting, but not my, like, I feel like I can imagine kind of messing around and taunting the grasshopper. Maki, okay, I'll say this. Maki, before the most recent chapters, probably not. But this Maki, this, like, more joyful Maki, 
I can see I can see you're messing around a little bit. I can see you kind of kind of playing with, like cutting off the arms, messing with it, not making sure you're. I mean, I'm not even sure even if the grasshopper did get off a hit. I, I, some of these curses, I wonder even if they did hit Monkey and Toji, is it doing anything? Or are they just chilling? Uh, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's 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 an easy wash. Maybe some entertaining personality. I, I mean, just to even have some fun here, like uh, I would imagine if the Flyhead or Ropongai curse even like touched Toji or Maki or tried to, they would just crumble into dust. Like uh, just uh, against that steel body, like just break yeah. whatever kind of bone structure they may have or their knuckles or whatever, like Dunzo. Yeah, so Grasshopper Curse stands absolutely no chance. They may have, they, they may th toss him around for a couple laughs, but uh, that's about all he's worth. Same as Yuji. And maybe yeah. even more brutal than Yuji, honestly, depending on what kind of mood Maki's in. Yeah, that might get real nasty for him. Uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like Toji might be the more merciful one out of the two. Uh, so next up on the gauntlet, we've got Finger Bearer Curse, or at least both okay. of them. I mean, I guess we could use the stronger version. Not that it really makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, quick, quick, easy scaling. Megami can deal with it. Megami cannot deal with Toji. <laughs> like, that's... That's it. To Toji has to take himself out of the fight for Megumi to walk away alive. Megumi, after getting some head trauma, was able to just pop open a new domain and beat the finger bear. And then Megumi just says in Shibuya, even if I could use my domain, it's not trapping Toji. And obviously Maki just would be the same in terms of stats, in terms of skill, all that. It's getting folded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, just to run some defense for the Cursed Spirit, I mean, Megami needed to use Domain Expansion for mm -hmm. uh, to, to defeat it. And Megami didn't use Domain Expansion against Toji. Like you said, I mean, it was Toji was a little too fast for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I got to run some defense for the Finger Spirit Curse. And he's got those Cursed Energy Arrows. Do you think that could even damage Maki or Toji? Uh, I mean, maybe. But when you look at, like, what it's done, it's, it's hurt. It's, it's, I mean, okay, I'll put it like this, right? The finger bearer that Yuji fights, Yuji kind of puts his hands and doesn't immediately die. I'm like, and that, once again, Yuji pre-cursed energy. This is just, this is Yuji pre all of his training, all of his Black Flash and Toto Amps. He's just like, the fact that his arms don't just immediately disintegrate, it's kind of like, wow, that is, it's strong, I guess, but relative to what Toji and Maki have, Ugh, it's not looking good. Like, I, I think it's definitely getting overpowered in just about every way. Yeah, no, 100%. I completely agree with you. I, I think it's time that we moved on to something that may be actually a little bit more worth discussing. Something that's mm -hmm. a little bit, something that's a little bit more of a challenge, or at least give them something, uh, you know, some food to actually play with. Yeah. Uh, next on the gauntlet is going to be the smallpox deity. How do okay. you think, uh, how do you think that would go? So I think that's probably where we, like you said, where we start to get to a little bit more interesting battles. Um, the the issue that you guys are going to notice that these cursed spirits with domains run into is that domains don't affect Toji or Maki for, okay, most domains. I will say most domains don't. Uh, <laughs> there is a character you yeah. need to worry about domains working, but most characters domains do not work on Maki or Toji. So the the smallpox deity's biggest strength being it's like if you're in the coffin for three seconds you die ability ah i mean that's cool and all for a normal person or against a normal sorcerer but if you have toji and maki being able to walk in there casually with no damage being taken or given to them and may may could overpower in terms of like raw stats and and use bird strike I don't want to downplay Bird Strike. I don't want to downplay like her her curse technique. However, I do think that Mei Mei has nothing that even is even in the same realm as Toji and Maki. No, and I, if you uh, take away its domain, then yeah. No, I definitely agree with you. Yeah, taking away its domain definitely makes a huge impact. Now that I really think about it, I mean that's really all of the smallpox deity was was its mm -hmm. domain, which was kind of overpowered if you think about it. But if it, yeah, I, I imagine it really going like it would count down to three, and then nothing would really happen because, like yeah. you said, they're comp uh, both Maki and Toji at this point are completely invulnerable to domains or at least to that one domain that we may get to a little bit later uh, uh, yeah uh but yeah no i think i completely agree with you i think if may may is able to slice up the smallpox deity's arms before he's even able to realize what's going on uh then i see no reason why uh toji and maki can't end it the exact same way especially if it can't pull it inside of its domain since <laughs> they need both Maki and Toji's permission to even do that. Yeah, for sure. 
think about that. Like you, you try and call it your domain expansion and they're like, nah. No, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. I, I don't want to be in here. Yeah, oh, that shit. would be that would be such a slap in the face. Oh, like, 100%. what do you, bro? This is it. This is all I got. This is my last resort. And you said no. Nah. Damn. It might. It might as well just <laughs> off at that point. <laughs> uh, next up, we actually have uh, maybe maybe a little bit more. Uh, Choso. Okay. I think this is the first one where I'm like, okay, this is actually genuinely a somewhat. I I still think obviously it's a stomp, but I think it gets to the point where it's like, okay, they have to exert some real effort. Yeah, um, Choso would definitely try and give them at least somewhat of a sweat. I, I would yeah. say, I, I would say, because when you figure you include flowing red scale and, and you, inc you include the way, the different ways that Choso can use it is actually really interesting, or at least the ways that he experiments with it. Like when he fights Noia and he's able to like put all of the blood in, or empower all of the blood in his eyes so he can actually- He can keep up. He can keep up with the speed that Noia is moving. like. That's just insane. And he can even take a full strike from Yuji and like guard yeah. against that. Like, I, I think it may take, uh, it wouldn't be a wash. It would take a couple uh, decent critical hits for Choso to go down, even though, like you said, he definitely would go down. Yeah, for sure. I think honestly, probably the most interesting interactions would be like, now I don't think either Maki or Toji do this in character, but it would be like, what if they attempt to block Piercing Blood? Because they both should be fast enough to avoid it very easily, considering that Yuji could do it um, pretty consistently throughout his fight. He says it's like a 50-50 chance, but anytime he does get hit, it's like a kind of like, besides the first time, it's like a, a glancing blow. Toji and um, and Maki should be like significantly faster just due to like the Naoya line of scaling, blah, blah, blah. I'm just thinking if they block that, they do have a very like, set limit of time you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. the, the clock starts ticking if we think that poison interacts with them the same way that it does normally people considering everything we've learned recently it might not <laughs> yeah but, right i right? was gonna say like yeah. even if like choso is able to land a nice like piercing blood attack and actually break skin and because uh, I, I believe he, if he was able to land a good strike, he would be able to do at least that. Like, apparently, Maki's able to regenerate literal internal organs in, what, yeah. about five, ten minutes? Yeah, in, in five minutes. In like she didn't even, like, she didn't even wait to fully heal when she fought Noya. Um, when, like, she let Kamo go out because she saw Kamo was getting folded. She was like, I can't even give it a full five minutes. I've just got to go and do this. Yeah, I mean, to, like, add insult to injury, if we remember when she first awakens, like, Ogi cuts open her stomach, right? And it, there's a panel where we see her actual, like, her stomach, right? <laughs> because of the de the depth of the wound, and then she just awakens, okay, cool, I'm gonna <laughs> take out the entire Zenin clan now. Their regen is crazy. Yeah, it, it is questionable if the poison would take them out. But, uh, you, you know, like, like you said, I, I think even if they were to succumb to that, I think they'd be able to eliminate Choso before it actually took them out. Uh, whether whether the poison yeah. gets, you know, is done when Choso is another question. But at the very least, if that's the case, then they would be the last one standing. For sure. 100%. Like, I, I think their strength is high enough. Their cursed tools definitely negate a lot of the durability Chosa would have anyways. But even if we, like, limit it to, like, a purely physical bout, I think they still, like, are pretty dominant. I mean, I'm honestly pretty stern on the fact that, like, I mean, maybe for the smallpox deity just to land the finishing blow, maybe for the other curses just to land the finishing blow, I doubt they would even have to use any of their cursed tools effects. You know, yeah. like, or at least like, I mean, maybe use it just to have some fun or use it to get like a clean kill. But like, mm -hmm. I, I doubt like any of them would actually even be required to do so. Yeah, there's certain characters that you could be like, yeah, it might be more necessary. But all the ones we talked about up till now, in terms of pure outputting damage, they do not need that. All right. All right. So next up, we've got Kurorushi, Cockroach Curse Spirit. Okay, this is definitely, I feel like kind of an interesting one. This one this one gets into a weird place to me because it starts interacting with yuta and i don't know about you but i have not quite decided where i think yuta is on the power scale relative to toji and maki i feel like just off of principle almost toji and maki are not going to really struggle with them i don't think kurushi performs well enough against yuta that even if yuta was above this current Maki, he would like the, the curse spirit would just scale to that. 
I would definitely say is probably up to this point going to be the hardest fought battle with the like life and sort of like curse tool that it has. Right. Even even one attack would be kind of an issue, right? I agree with you. I think just based off of Yuta's feats alone, we can conclude the, the, the result of the battle. But I also agree that it would definitely be one of the most, um, one of the most thrilling battles for both Toji and Maki. They would definitely have to put their most into this one so far, just based off of yeah. the amount of things that Kurorushi can do. Like you mentioned the festering life sword, which I completely forgot about, to be completely honest with you. That is a huge threat to both of them. Mm -hmm. Even though we did see Yuta um, cut the, um, the parasites or whatever does grow out, I'm not sure. It's not very clear if he did also use some form of cursed energy to, to help him out with that, right? I don't know. Yeah. So like, even though we do see Yuta completely cut them off and sever the connection, we're not sure if Maki and Toji would be able to use that. Um, sure. But I, I think just based off of like some of the feats that Yuta does, like when we see Kurorushi use waves of cockroaches, Yuta is able to, although albeit with cursed energy, slash them all away. I think mm -hmm. with what we've seen Toji do with the chain of a thousand miles and the inverted spear of heaven, where he's able to whip up the blade and do like dust or uh, even turn it basically into a shockwave at some point with his power. Yeah. Um, I, I think he could accomplish the same kind of thing. I, I don't think any of Kurorushi's moves in regards to the cockroaches, maybe with some of the different like jujutsu spells he has, um, mm -hmm. with like the summoning Shikigami that he sends out. I don't even know what yeah. like their like abilities were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If you want to, does deal me. with them. Yeah, pretty quickly. They seem to just be like it, it's an interesting thing because when they they are broken, they explode in Yuta's face to blind him for the um, the festering life sword attack. I will say that I do think in terms of like physical abilities, Kurushi is not really comparing to what Maki and Toji have to offer. I would say probably, and, and the thing is, I think okay. Under the assumption that they get hit with Festering Life Sword, I do think that they have to like immediately kill him because that is a like huge problem. But I feel like with their seemingly extra sensory abilities, with that Maki demonstrated being able to sense where now he is going to come at Mach 3 before he even does it, it may just be a matter of as soon as he even loads up the cursed energy to shoot those out, they're aware that some weird attack is coming and they just avoid it like before even someone like Yuta would have been able to notice. Right. Uh, I completely agree with you. Being able to see like the soul of inanimate objects, they'd definitely be able to see something's up with that sword as soon as Kurorushi pulls it out. So they would, I feel like they would know already to stay kind of clear of that. And if they did get hit with it, I, I think they could move fast enough to dodge it. Um, yeah. uh, I think, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, like with the inverted spear of heaven, they may even be able to completely nullify that if they cut the parasites with that blade, even thinking yeah. about it. Because I would imagine whatever's tied to that cursed tool is a cursed technique of some sort. For sure. Probably. Like, I think, yeah, like Playful Cloud is the only like really high level cursed tool we've seen that explicitly does not have a technique. Um, so I, I definitely think this is probably the, one of the more hard fought ones, but it's definitely not something that they can't overcome. I, I, a lot of it depends on how they go into it. It seems that Toji one is a super cautious fighter. So he's probably ripping through it at the, like the inkling of any danger. And Maki at this point is going to be able to sense if any danger is even near her anyways. So I definitely think they'd be able to handle it if they need to. Right, I definitely agree. And and I think, um I, I agree with what you're saying with Toji being the more cautious fighter. I feel like Maki is the more get straight to the point kind of fighter where she is yeah. not even going to entertain a curse. Whereas Toji may take his time and try and figure out what a curse is trying to do. Maki's going to go right for the immediately. Yeah. So whereas where Toji may actually run into the festering life sword and that actually may be something he has to deal with. I feel like Maki would just go right in Kurorushi and not even get to that point to where he even can pull that out on her or even like try yeah. and use it. Yeah, I could see Toji like letting Kur not letting Kurorushi, but biding his time against him, not because of a need, but more of like we see that sneaky techniques can really put you in a bad position, even if you're like demonstrably above your opponent, as mm -hmm. shown with Yuta, right? Yuta was bullying Kurushi, but one attack forced him to go from not using reverse curse technique at all to having to use it in order to not So I can definitely see Toji kind of being cautious, seeing, kind of feeling him out, almost kind of how Megami does with a lot of characters that he fights. Seems to be a similarity between the two. Uh, and I, and then after he sees it, he's like, all right, cool. I can dodge it, whatever time to. 
Either way, I think they're both avoiding it in their own unique ways. But yeah, they're, they're, they're tearing Kurushi apart for sure. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we have, uh, we're moving on to the disaster curses now. We can kind of uh, run through these, maybe not too quickly, but we'll give each one of them their dues. Uh, so first up, of course, is going to be the natural spirit of the four, uh, Hanami. Yeah. Uh, ha rip Hanami. Um, <laughs> like, Baki's taking that it, rematch. She's getting all that yeah, revenge back, baby. Yeah, that's not, that's not looking good. Like, okay. Here's the thing, right? Hanami's, I think Hanami's one of the more durable, like on arguably the only one more durable is like a true form Mahito, right? But Hanami, even with his durability, Hanami could get damaged by Yuji and Toto in goodwill individually. Yeah. Right? And Maki, before the awakening, with playful cloud could rip off chunks of his arm. No matter what defenses Hanami tries to put up, he, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be an, uh, an adequate defense against these two. Yeah, I completely 100% agree. Uh, and even if they, like, use Playful Cloud or anything like that, like, they, they, they stand absolutely, uh, Hanami, uh, when I when I say they, uh, they, Hanami stands absolutely no chance whatsoever uh, against one of them using any of their curse tools. I mean, even with the, the literal forests that they can summon, uh, I mean, we've seen Yuji and Toto just, what, parkour those, right? So yeah. <laughs> I, I don't see anything that Hanami has being an actual threat to, to Maki or, or Toji. And, and I feel like the one thing, if anything, would be the flowers that Hanami can summon that may take away your fighting spirit. But I think Maki, with w what we've seen, uh, having uh, what she claims to have is no heart. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't even think that would even affect her, to be completely honest. <laughs> yeah. And, and Toji, with Toji. Uh, Toji doesn't he's a, he's need to. He's a ninja. To, yeah, Toji can, Toji can be in a good mood and still <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't think that's doing much for her. Or uh, uh, Hanami. Yeah, Hanami's getting beat up. Yeah. Plain, plain and simple. Done, done, done. And uh, with the uh, uh, Ds, we've got Dagon coming up. We saw the fight. <laughs> we saw how it played out. Very true, very true. We don't even have to elaborate any more on that. We literally watched that happen uh, night and day, and now it's actually even more confirmed to be a wash because uh, yeah. even if Megami wasn't holding back uh, Dagon's domain expansion and sure hit, it wouldn't have made one lick of a difference. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, Dagon gets uh, folded like a piece of paper. Um, <laughs> Jogo comes up next. Okay. I'm curious what you think about this one, because up until I've only recently, somewhat with the new chapters, but somewhat with me thinking that Maki's narrative importance is going to require her to be much stronger than characters of the past. Um, I, I, I previously was like a, you can argue Jogo over Toji person. Same, I don't think honestly. so anymore. I don't think so anymore. I'm not going to lie to you. Like my, my stance is really almost made a 180 on that. I don't know if it has for you. I, I, I still think it's it, it's a very tough battle. I, I, I think Jogo just has a lot behind him. He has a lot of speed. He has a lot of attack power. He is capable of doing a lot of damage to you very quickly and in a lot of different ways with ember insects, with just the different like lava plumes he can pop up literally out of nowhere, like at a will. And he's also shown to be maybe not as durable as Hanami, but pretty durable. I mean, he was able to... Uh, eat an entire red from Gojo like mm -hmm. that's that's no small feat you know what I mean for sure I, I mean Jogo definitely has a lot of strength and just uh, all of the stats behind him but I, I think 100%. yeah like you said with the development of the last chapter just if anything the one thing that Jogo always had going for him was his domain right mm -hmm. you know he all it, it, whatever however the fight proceeded with Toji or Maki he always had his domain and they stood no chance they would melt into ash or whatever it was he's supposed to do uh, but mm -hmm. now that doesn't really happen yeah and and honestly um even even when you look at that you look at Dagon's assessment of Naobito right two arm Naobito being like he's probably faster than Jogo and I'm like, okay, that's impressive. And then you look at the fact that Toji and Maki, or, or rather that like, it was kind of an established fact that at any point in time, Toji could have demolished a Zenin clan, right? And then I think, I'm like, okay, if Naobito's probably faster than Jogo, we'll say it's ambiguous, right? And then Toji has to be at least fast enough to deal with Naobito. I think Toji has the speed to combat that, like Jogo's level of speed. And then it just gets to a matter of, all right, whose hits are going to be more lethal. And I think the Soul Splitting Blade definitely is going to be that deciding factor. Either that or Inverted Spear of Heaven or the Thousand Mile Chain. Like Toji just has a lot of weaponry that he has in his arsenal, like uh, ready to use. But yeah, I think we 
do both agree that recent developments kind of demonstrate that it's it's much more it's for me it's much more in toji's favor than i previously thought and what about maki do you think it's a kind of different outcome for her I think Maki's getting a, getting her get back. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all, all right. I'm gonna say. Maki's making sure Jogo uh, Jogo gets his for those scars. Bet, bet, bet. All right. So that's the the elemental curse spirits down and out. They keep passing on. They keep passing on. Next up is the granddaddy of the disaster curses, uh, Mr. Mahito himself. Yeah, this is another one that I'm like recent developments, recent about like I've always I've I, I will say this I've always called into question the validity of Idol Transfiguration on Toji definitively. If they get put in his domain, they're just like not gonna or they can like hurt his soul or whatever without like because they you know their bodies are different. But now we just have that. Yep, they can perceive the shape of the soul. Yep, they both have weapons that can directly attack it. And the fact that like Yuji and Toto could like in terms of physical abilities go back and forth. To me is like a a sort of okay yeah maki and toji can do that too yeah i i think mahito would definitely be able to um to keep them on the ropes i think with all the different abilities that he has like polymorphic soul isomer and like other things like he'd definitely be able to keep them busy but i i can i i definitely don't see him coming out on top anymore knowing that even if he is able to pull them into like a, even a 0 0.2 on his best day it ain't making no difference whatsoever. And the yeah. fact that, and the one thing that was always holding them back, despite, you know, what the advantages that they may have over physically, uh, is the soul and being able to see that. But with Maki and Toji both being able to see that, that just, Mahito gets, uh, gains another counter. He gains yeah. another natural enemy, and this natural enemy not only can see his soul, but has the means of completely tearing through his soul and ignoring mm -hmm. all durability and hardness or anything that may get in the way of doing that. Yeah, it, it's honestly pretty bad, because I can imagine, because the way Mahito fights, he sort of, like, allows people not named Yuji, and more recently, I guess, like, kind of like Nobara, to hit him because it, he doesn't have any issue. Like, he does that versus Mechamaru. He's like, it, it doesn't matter. You're not going to hurt me. And if he thinks that he's going to get ran up on by, like, Toji or Maki, and he's like, okay, whatever, I'll let you take my arm, and then I'll counter and kill you. And then he's just like, oh, that arm is gone for good. Like, I lost that. <laughs> they cut through it. The soul, the body, everything, right? I could, I could very easily imagine him kind of setting up a plan because he kind of does that with Yuji and Shibuya where he's like I'll trick him into thinking this and then I'll counter that's not gonna work with Maki and Toji do not if he's sack if he's like I'll sacrifice this part because they can't hit my soul in exchange for like a yeah. counter attack yeah. not gonna end up good for him not gonna end up good for him even in a straight confrontation like he said it's they're physically superior and they can perceive and touch his soul that's not good for Mahito yeah, 100%. Yeah, he definitely would be smart enough to to figure out what's going on. Like if he took, like you said, a, a small blow on his arm or a, you know, lost an arm or something like that. Like I definitely think he'd be able to be like, whoa, all right, I can't f around anymore. You know, time to get serious. But I think at the same time, even if he knew what was going on and he knew the threats that he was facing, despite he doesn't really have anything that would get him out of that situation he really just unfortunately does besides running away <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. uh, i really don't see him coming out on top and the one thing that really just solidifies it is the fact that like they can end his soul they can end him completely and uh mm -hmm. ghetto um no not ghetto kenjaku isn't going to be around to save him this time yeah not looking good for him Oof, wow. Maki and Toji advance once again across the gauntlet. They've taken pretty much almost every curse spirit out so far. All right. <laughs> Moving forward is uh, something that we have seen already, um, but maybe it would be interesting to get your take on how Toji would fare with vengeful spirit Noya. <laughs> now he's just going to be too busy, for, like, just not. You'd be like, Toji, I, I, I'm you now. I'm you now. <laughs> and Toji's like, dude, he's like, I don't even remember dude's names. For and he, real. Just, he just takes him out. Uh, would he even fight Toji? Would he just be standing the entire time? Like, he wouldn't even, like, be willing to go up in arms against him. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's honestly, it's like, bro, Toji would just, because the thing is, Toji would not care either. Like, now you would be trying to, fl like, bro, I'm, I'm just like you for real. We, we're, we're one in the same. And Toji would be like, dude, bro, who, what's your name? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know who you are. And then he just cuts him in half. Exactly, you get that face on Noe is like looking like, oh my god, he doesn't remember me, and then just <laughs> Yeah, not just looking it. good. No, no, not at all, not at all, not at all. 
Um, so uh, you can't see me, and I, I think my mic won't pick it up, but I'm clapping my hands clean of the dust. <laughs> Um, because that's what Toji and Maki are doing. They've just basically taken out pretty much any cursed spirit noteworthy in the series. There were a couple ones that I left out, like Tamamo, like Tamamano, what the f like Tamamano no Mei, I guess you could say uh, that. Is that Ghetto's? Is that the one Ghetto summons? Uh, that is the special grade that Ghetto summons, but we don't know what that cursed spirit was yeah. capable of, and it gets annihilated by a cursed energy blast by Yuta and Rika, mm -hmm. so... I'm going to yeah. have to go ahead and say that Toji and Maki would probably do just fine. Um, <laughs> and then you have the Cursed Spirit, the Cursed Spirits, I should say, that get those summons Rainbow Dragon and Uchisani Ona. Ah, yes. Uh, which uh, we've already seen that as well, completely uh -huh. demolished. Um, so yeah. I guess if Maki and Toji can take out every literal Cursed Spirit that we've seen so far, I guess the only reliable step, the only reliable final boss would be the King of Curses, Ryomen Sakuna. <laughs> ah, and here is where the tables turn. It depends. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this. Are we going through the different stages we've seen him at? Or like three finger, 15 finger, or is it we're just going 15 finger right off the bat? Like what what does he, how does he stack up or how do they stack up rather? So I think that'd be fun if you wanted to start at like, I mean, even like, how do you feel like three finger? Like, do you think uh, as we completely evolve and Sakuna gets more and more powerful like do you think the do you think the result changes so I definitely think the match becomes more more of a coin flip when you get to three finger um Sakuna because obviously you have making me statement faster than three finger Sakuna right um I think there is like I I always hesitate to bring that up because I've always had the somewhat criticism of well Megami's getting like perception blitzed in both of these instances how does he know, right? <laughs> like, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, both of those people just appeared and grabbed your face. Like, what do you mean they're they're about the same speed, buddy? But if you do want to use that statement that puts them on, like, relative plane speed-wise, I don't know how you feel about, like, Toji and Maki being faster or having faster reactions by proxy of them having, like, Maki's, like, pre-cog as she because you know that Maki's ability when she's fighting now yeah now he's moving at Mach 3 so she's able to dodge somebody that even though her stats didn't increase but her ability to like avoid and react to people did I don't know do you think that means like if if their physical speed is the same Toji and Maki would still be effectively faster just by nature of of their like pre-cog almost hacks I uh, I don't know if I would consider them faster, but the thing is, is even if you were to consider them on a similar level, like I think the way that we saw Sukuna just manhandle Megami, toss him into the air, meet him up in the air and slam him back down. Like quite honestly, I feel like these are all things that Maki and Toji are capable of. I mean, we, we, we saw Maki literally do it uh, not even two to three chapters ago with Naoya, just literally yeah. running through at but being able to catch up to Noya yeah, at Mach 3 speed, right? Like, yeah. I, I feel like, if anything, the speed boundaries have definitely been broken. Um, And so even taking that off of the table, if taking speed completely off of the table, I feel like their attack power is similar, if not stronger. Um, yeah. The one thing that I would worry about is, of course, the one thing that we're going to worry about in every iteration of Sukuna, and that's the domain expansion. Um, yeah. But... Let me... Okay, let me ask you this before we get into domains, right? Because I think that's something we can cover. How do you feel about his curse technique outside of the domain? Like, do you think they can see that? I, quite honestly, I believe that they would be definitely able to see that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think if they're able to see with that extrasensory technique, things that aren't supposed to be there, or I forget how Dido really puts it. I'll put the panel on the screen here. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like they should be able to see it. And I also feel like if anything, it's interesting that Sukuna even notes that Maharaga is able to see it. So yeah. so I feel like at that point, there must be some sort of cognition or vision that's being used um, in order to see this. And I, I, I can't see Gege just pulling three, four different kinds of things. I, I imagine everything has to be somewhat connected, right? Um, yeah. So I definitely, um, I definitely see them being able to see it would they be able to react to it at three fingers i think yeah um yeah uh, I, I definitely could see them being able to react to it and be able to dodge it yeah and then and and i think at that point suken is probably getting the best fight he could have asked for like oh, pre-domain expansion they're just going back and forth they're like i think honestly i think honestly pre-domain because of their arsenals suken might actually be genuinely put on the back foot 
because you have Toji with like insane, literally infinite range with the <laughs> with his like his his thousand mile long chain or whatever. True. Right. You have inverted Spear of Heaven. You have his soul cutting blade. Right. And it's like okay. He definitely, if we're arguing that they're basically equal in every other capacity, then that arsenal is going to go a long way. Once again, pre-domain expansion. Like, it would be super interesting to see Sukuna genuinely be like, wow, I am actually genuinely getting pushed. Like, if I don't have, if I don't, you know, if I don't actually really bring everything out, I might actually just lose. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, and, and honestly, we've even seen things like this be recreated when he fights Maharaga and he realizes that Maharaga's changed the property of his blade to be able to actually land a decent strike on him. And I feel like Sukuna would be aware that the Soul Liberation Blade would definitely be able to do some serious damage to him. I feel like he may even be uh, aware of, if not already know of, some of the curse tools, especially things like the Inverted Spear of Heaven. You know, I, yeah. I, I can't see Sukuna not being privy to them, depending on how old these curse tools actually are. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like these are all things that he'd be able to counter against, but at three fingers... Would he actually be able to counter against them is the actual huge question, because he may be aware of all of this, but does he have the power to actually do anything about it? I think pre-domain, even with Dismantle Cleave and with the physical feats that we've seen him use on Megami, I, I feel like Toji and Maki would definitely be able to match him every step of the way and would eventually be able to beat him, especially in a fight of attrition. Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. I think the thing is, you have to keep him from opening his domain. I don't know how you feel about like three finger Sukuna domain opening. The, the issue is they have no personal incentive to you. They probably don't know that Sukuna's uh, domain is, is, is quite literally built different. Yeah, that's one thing that I was literally just talking about is where now that, uh, especially someone like Maki, I'm sure Toji was aware of it too, but now that Maki's aware of the fact that she's immune to domain expansions, I feel like something specifically like Sakuna's domain expansion would catch her off guard because yeah. she's gonna, Sakuna's gonna go domain expansion, she's gonna either rush in or not put her guard up or run away because she's going to be like, I can handle this. This will be no problem. And then she's going to realize when no barrier gets set up, she's going to go, oh, this is weird. Uh, yeah. And then she's just going to get taken out. But I, I think one question that I wanted to get into um, was if three finger Sukuna, we've seen him only use his malevolent shrine with, do with the barrier. Do you think three finger Sukuna would be able to use the barrier list domain expansion and specify with cleave? and dismantle to hit certain specific objects. Do you think that's something that Three Finger Sakuna is even capable of? So honestly, I don't, does he use the barrier? I actually don't remember if he does. I thought that you can, obviously you can correct me if I'm wrong. I thought he just summons the shrine, right? In the little, like under the bridge that he breaks the finger barrier through. And we still see the water and stuff like that. And then he cuts it up. Maybe he does summon a barrier. I'm not sure. Um, He probably should be able to. It's that's not a doubt of that. Question. I just don't remember if he does Um, like actually, yeah. If he does have a barrier, right, then Maki and Toji just close in and he's like, well, uh, <laughs> that was a problem. And then he just he just loses, right? If he does not have a barrier, right, and it's like his 15 finger iteration, then they lose. I feel like if Maki and Toji then entered invisibly, I feel like Sukuna would be the type where he'd be able to see them and be like, oh, well, that's interesting. And then at that point, I, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to then change his targets to inanimate objects. If that's what his curse technique yeah. is based off of, then I, I, I don't see him being able to be like, wow, okay, that's interesting. And then dismantle uh, inanimate objects and then take them out. I don't know if I would give them the win anymore. I'm changing my mind, Roni. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think I definitely think it's high diff either way, but it, the only way Toji and Maki can win, in my opinion, is if they <laughs> Sukuna before he gets off a domain. If I think it's I think it's plausible. I think they could, right? But if they, you know, Sukuna hangs on long enough, his constant healing is a problem or things like that, and he gets off the domain expansion, then I think that's where they lose. Yeah, uh, definitely. I, I think three fingers is where they stand a chance. Fifteen fingers is where all hope is lost. Um, That's where it gets really bad. It, yeah, I, I don't see them. I, I don't see them, either of them really coming out of that one, especially with just the fact that his domain expansion is specifically tailored to them and would be able to completely eliminate them. And what, what defense would they really have against it? Yeah, uh, none. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> nothing. They they have nothing. And the thing, and you know, just real quick, because I feel like uh, a lot of people when you when you bring that up, maybe like why? And the reason is just because when Sukuna brings out his domain, his technique specifically targets people with cursed energy and inanimate objects. So it's it's a actually a specified thing. And since Maki and Toji are considered like inanimate objects within the domain, um, they are going to classify as one of the targets for his technique. And that's definitely going to be a problem. 100%. I definitely uh, don't see them coming out of this. I, I think finger 15 fingers is just way too much for them to handle. Three fingers, high diff, maybe, if that. But uh, it seems like we both agree that the domain expansion is pretty much where uh, their their dreams go to end. Um, yep. the, the gauntlet run ends right there. They take out pretty much every curse spirit in the uh, series um, besides Sukuna, um, unless we have any reason to go back on any of our choices so far. Nah, nah. Sukuna, I mean, honestly, if you're going to lose to anybody, losing to the literal king of curses is not that bad. <laughs> no, 100%. I, I definitely agree with that. And I can't give them more praise. Um, at this point, now that we've got this development, it really has completely changed just the, the game of power scaling, at least for the Heavenly Restriction characters. I mean, they may not be honored one level. I mean, maybe in, unless you want to correct me, um, but they're definitely um, they're definitely the bridge between, I would say. Yeah, that I think Gage has really reinforced that. Even though Toji died relatively like early on in the series, the the level of power he possesses is, is still relevant now. Yeah, one hundred percent. When the series starts uh, getting a little slow, the readers stop trickling in. Gage is like, <laughs> "All right, Toji panel, here we go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Toji would have been able to do like, yeah. It's like I feel like ever since uh, ever since Nanami's passing, Gage has been like, you know what, Toji, you are my second favorite character. <laughs> Let, let's put let's put you in the game for real. <laughs> Now, just for funsies, just because I thought of it, and I know we're pretty much done with the gauntlet, and they're, uh, Maki and Toji, they, they did fail, but maybe to redeem them for the end of the video, let's say they lose, and they somehow end up in a loser's bracket. And okay. the loser's bracket opponent is Gojo. Uh, oh. <laughs> just because I've seen a bunch of people talking about it and how he would fare against them now based off of this new development. So I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. I'm sure the people would be too. Yeah, so I actually had a discussion with somebody. Somebody told me, right, that if Maki had inverted Spear of Heaven, she would be able to beat Gojo. And I initially thought they were talking about Team Gojo, right? I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, if to literally my the application I have right now is if Toji could do it, Maki, this Maki can do it, no debate right um they're equal they're just stated to be equal not just as like strength but like as fighters right so i'm like that should include like their their skill um all of that all that different like stuff that goes into being a fighter right um but but he, he then corrected himself and said adult gojo and i was like dude that's that's just not happening um and the reason is pretty simple the reason is pretty simple if we have a awakened teen gojo avoiding several strikes from toji before flying into the air and slamming him with red and then finishing him off with purple in like 2.5 seconds. Why do we think a Gojo with decades of refinement, of 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 teleportation, of of like all of this honing of his abilities? Why do we think like what are we doing? What's going on, guys? I feel like I feel like Toji, I mean not Toji, Gojo might actually get some some PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> he might it might be a reverse situation where like I'm alive and Gojo's like, huh? <laughs> Why are you here? But the fight does not go in Toji and or Maki's way. I just it's it's they get they get hit with purple. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, like, we, we saw what happened the first time uh, with that huge hole. Uh, the, uh, Toji basically became a hollow. You, you know what I mean? Like he, uh, yeah. he, he when it came down to it, as soon as Gojo was awakened and, and realized the, the potential that he was capable of, it was over. He didn't stand a chance. And even Toji knew that Toji was he even admitted he, he was so prideful that he was like, you know what? I, I'm so I, I am him. Like, I'll be able to take anyone on. And then once Gojo started levitating in the air and and just pulled those fingers back, he was like, yeah, you know what? I f***ed up here. Yeah, and, I made a mistake. And, and I feel like Maki, Maki, even knowing what to Gojo is capable of, I don't even think she would. I, I feel like she would even know. She'd be like, yeah, I'm just not going to f*** with you. Like, yeah. it wouldn't even be worth it because at Gojo, I don't think 
I don't think would be able to keep up physically. Um, even though we've seen a crazy physical feats from Gojo. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think at the very least, like they do overpower him in overall attack power. They'd be able to, and, and just their precognition and their extra sensory techniques, I think would definitely help them. Not that Gojo doesn't have the six eyes. I think they would definitely have a decent back and forth, but I think overall Gojo would say it's not even worth it. He'd just pull out the purple, realizing what he's facing, and it would be it. Uh -huh. Yeah, it would not be. It would not be good. And you can't even. You can't even say like they attack like a fatigued Gojo like they do with Teen because he just doesn't get tired. <laughs> it's just, yeah. You don't. You don't even have that weakness anymore. They literally, it's, it's impossible. Toji had one shot to attack a fatigued Gojo and never again. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 So, Absolutely. Yeah. Not. It, it'd be fun. It would be like a fun like what if they fought, but it definitely would not be something that. Uh, that goes in their favor. Do you think but, they're I mean, vulnerable to his domain? Uh, yes, I think so. Interesting. Um, yeah, because I just think I think Gojo's technique is a sure hit, just like everybody else is a sure hit. Yeah, I don't think I he do would feel need it to be honest with you, yeah. but I was just curious. Yeah, for sure. I do think I will say that like the fact that these characters so far we have like only losing to like the top point zero 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 one percent of the verse should indicate how impressive we think these characters are in terms of like um, in terms of the power rankings now so yeah they're losing to, to to the king of curses and gojo satoru right but like that's about it that I mean, there are very there are a handful of characters that toji and maki realistically lose to at this point in the series you better watch that pronunciation you're gonna get clapped in my comments section. yeah 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 i know i said it i was like oh this is a new audience they not they not used to the way i pronounce it i'm, I'm getting i'm gonna get cooked nah but it is a, what it is it's okay a bunch of people in the comments think it think they're just native japanese speakers for some reasons <laughs> um so I, I think, yeah, I, I think that's a great place to, to really end it. Sadly, Toji and Maki do not reach uh, the end of the gauntlet, but they definitely made it further than I think, frankly, any other character would. It, it's kind of hard for me to, to find anyone else that would be able to get this far in the gauntlet, same as uh, Maki and uh, Toji would besides Gojo himself. Um, yeah. But no, definitely. I want to thank Ronin for helping me out with this video. This was a lot of fun. If you want to consider it was definitely a sequel to our last collab that we did, uh, Utah vs. the Disaster Curses. I thought it'd be a great idea to get this new project out with just the new developments that we've seen because Maki is, as we know now, a war god. Ronin, I know <laughs> you read the uh, the official translation. I'm not sure if she was titled that in your read through. But... Oh, is she is she called a war god in the in, in the in the scans of yeah. like the unofficials? In the that's, scans, that's hard. That's the editor's that's hard. note. Uh, 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 Maki, a literal war god. That's hard. In, in in the official, she's got a demonic fighter, which is still cool, but a war god is crazy. Hell that yeah. That sounds cool. Hell yeah. So I, I think this pretty much makes um, all of our opinions clear that Toji and Maki have just been elevated to, you know what? Like if, if the power scaling was a pyramid, obviously you've got Gojo and Sukuna up top. You've got everyone else on like on like a bottom layer and then mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in the middle here somewhere in the middle you've got yuta just chilling out somewhere in the middle between all of these people and then now a little bit to the side it's almost like you ever seen the category for where sigma males are compared to everyone yeah. else on the hierarchy <laughs> yeah that's I've uh, seen those. that's literally where toji and maki are right now they're just they're yeah. not in the hierarchy they're on the side of the yeah. hierarchy <laughs> yeah um so I, I think that i think that pretty much covers it guys thank you so much for um checking the video out go subscribe to broken ronin he makes awesome jujutsu kaisen content uh if you want to plug yourself and you have any videos that you're about to come out with or you just did please yeah for sure so i have some uh i have some toji and maki content uh respectively coming out got a video talking about toji dealing with some uh some an interesting curse technique that i think a lot of people are gonna have fun uh watching and then i have a maki versus battle that i'm gonna have fun uh dropping pretty soon as well so look forward to you know having these kind of come out simultaneously a lot of toji and maki love so that's gonna be fun awesome 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 thanks again guys for watching as always uh this is your second reminder to leave a like and subscribe on the video uh and i'll catch you guys all in the next one peace